I am not an expert in politics. I am not an expert in government. I am knowledgeable about Jewish sources, and I want to share with you some Jewish sources that I have selected in order to both share some of my feelings and to let you know what our tradition fantasizes about doing to those people who cause the kind of violence and damages to the social fabric as we have seen in the last 24 hours coming from our nation's capital. We begin in Deuteronomy where the Torah is very clear that if someone entices you to engage in the worship of that which is other than God, you are to show him no pity, show him no compassion, show him no mercy, take his life. This is in the instance where someone comes to you in private and there aren't witnesses because according to the usual laws of Jewish jurisprudence, you need two witnesses in order to convict somebody. But in a case where what the person is enticing you to do is something as injurious to the national fabric as idolatry, you are told by the Torah, show him no pity or compassion, do not shield him, but take his life. What's not always obvious to American Jews is that idolatry doesn't only have to be the worship of stones and wood, creations of the human hands. Two contemporary scholars, Moshe Halbertal and Abishai Margalit, write in idolatry about how the entire book of Deuteronomy expresses the Israelites' relationship to God through a political metaphor. The political model presents pride and power drunkenness as the sources of creation of gods and the sin of idolatry. In this case, deification, turning something into a god, turning something into an idol, doesn't necessarily mean investing it with superpowers, but it can be the transformation of something, like political power, into a supreme value. And I do believe that is what we have seen over the course of the last few years. When we take a look at what is done to someone who has engaged in this kind of activity, we are reminded of last week's Devar Torah, where I talked to you about how the laws of mercy are baked into the laws of legal procedure, so that if someone is found guilty, even though there are so many different kinds of ways that mitigate the possibility of finding someone guilty of a capital crime, then there is no chance for a pardon. Here's what we have from Maimonides based on the Talmud. The laws which pertain to a mesit, a person who entices others to serve false divinities, are the opposite of those pertaining to others liable for capital punishment. So all of the laws that we saw last week are stood on their head when it comes to someone who is enticing others to engage in idolatry. He doesn't need a warning if he departed from the court after being acquitted, but somebody says, ah, I know a rationale that will lead to his conviction. He is returned and retried. If he was sentenced to death and someone said, I know a rationale that will lead to his release, he is not retried, just the opposite. And then Maimonides explains the rationale. For cruelty to those who sway the people after emptiness brings mercy to the world. That's about what you do to the person who was responsible for enticing others to idolatry. But what about you yourself? There is a law in the Torah that is explained by a medieval philosophical commentator who writes in the decades after Maimonides. This is from a law in the Torah, and the law is to not abandon the hatred towards the seducer. 
or towards the inciter or towards the enticer. The hatred against the Macy's, against the seducer, should be fixed in our hearts. We should maintain the grudge of vengeance upon him. We shouldn't forgive, and we certainly shouldn't forget. About this, it is stated in Deuteronomy, you shall not listen to him. The way the rabbis understand you shall not listen to him is to not be amenable to him, to remove the grudge of vengeance upon him from your heart. And of course, your heart in biblical and rabbinic language is your mind. You need to maintain that clear perception of the evil which the insider has perpetrated so that it continues to inform your actions. If you take a look at our own Sidor, Seder Avodah, page 600 to 601, we have a somewhat parv translation of a somewhat more parv blessing against the heretics, as it is called. What I am showing you here is the, is the Mizrahi Sidor's curse of heretics and informers. For the informers and the heretics, let there be no hope. May all the insolent perish in an instant. All your enemies and all your haters, may they quickly be cut out. As for the wicked government, may you uproot and smash and terminate and subdue them speedily in our days. Blessed are you, Hashem, who smashes the enemies and subdues the insolent. Our country is going to be going through a period of reckoning. For many of us, it began long before yesterday. There are many texts, there are many values that will promote tolerance, that will promote fraternity, that will promote cooperation. And I will be bringing those texts to our attention as well as we move forward. But I don't want to lose sight of what our tradition has us keep in mind while we go through the process of reconciliation. May we all know better days quickly and in our future, and may the animosity that has poisoned the bloodstream of our country dissipate quickly and in our days. <laughs>